Hi, this is Shivam, BSc third year. Today we are going to talk about the very famous person called Norman Levy Bowen. Norman Levy Bowen was the principal investigator and leader in the 20th century of the Magmatis School of Geology. The son of English immigrants to Canada, he was educated in Kingston Public Schools before entering Queen's University in 1903. He took honors courses in chemistry and mineralogy before being granted in MA in 1907. He then entered the Faculty of Applied Sciences in 1909. He was awarded BS by the School of Mining. Preparation for his work in experimental petrology continued when Bowen was employed by Ontario Bureau of Mines before entering Mass Massachusetts Institute of Technology for doc doctoral studies in 1909. During the summers of 1910 and 1911, he worked for the Canadian Geological Survey in Western Canada, supplementing his investigations at Geophysical Laboratory of the Carnegie Institution, Institution of Washington, D.C. This year of advanced study saw the development of his pattern research which combined laboratory experiment with field investigations. In preparing his doctoral dissertation on a phase equilibrium study of the Nephilim Carnegie Anthrotide system, Bowen followed the work of Norman J. H. L. Wacht, who had made petrological analysis using physical chemistry. He worked under the direction of AL Day of the Geophysical Laboratory and was also influenced by early association with R.A. Daly. Bowen published critical phase diagrams for the study of major igneous rocks, the plagioclase system in 1913, MGO-SiO2 system and the ternary system diopside forcenite silica in 1914 and with colleagues Another 21 phase, 21 phase diagrams, the last appeared almost coincidentally with his death. From the beginning, his principal, principal concern was the differentiation of igneous rocks. In 1927, he wrote, rock series cannot be partitioned off into such divisions as gabbro, diorite, etc. Each having Eukatic of its own. All of these belong to a single crystallization series to a single polycomponent system which is dominated by reaction series. Silicate phase equilibria studies, in particular his own plagioclase diagram, formed the basis on which Bowen published his carefully reasoned theory of the evolution of igneous rock. In 1915, the rocks of any area, he stated, vary among themselves in a systematic manner which indicates derivation from a common stock, though differentiation. He ruled, he ruled out assimilation of country rock as a major factor in differentiation and dismissed plangenesis the diffusion of sedimentary terrains, holding that gravitative separation by sinking and floating of early formed crystals. He ruled out assimilation of country rock as a major factor in differentiation and dismissed palygenesis, the diffusion of sedimentary terrains, holding that gravitative separation by sinking and floating of early formed crystals and the separation of residual liquids were all were the all important instrument of differentiation. Bowen formulated a simplified reaction series for the subalkaline rocks to illustrate his reaction principle. According to Bowen's reaction principle, typical series of igneous rocks are produced from a primary 
basaltic magma by the continual reaction during crystallization of early formed crystal with liquid. The differentiation being brought about by the separation of crystals from liquid in various proportions and at various stages. The implications of these ideas for the ore of ore formation through residual volatile fluids for volcanology, for the basic physics of the earth as well as for his primary field of petrogenesis, supplied work not only for the remainder of Bowman's life but also for many of the most distinguished scientists of his time. His reaction principle is now encoded in elementary textbooks of geology as one of the fundamental concepts of the science. Bowen's studies were treated by work on optical glass projects during World War I. In 1990, he served at Queen's University as a professor of mineralogy. Returning to the Geophysical Laboratory in 1920, between 1927 and 1945, he re resumed academic duties as professor of petrology at the University of Chicago. He returned to the Washington Laboratory in 1947. Until he, his death, Bowen examined the physical chemical base, basis for ge geological processes. His major conclusions were brought together in the evolution of igneous rocks. In his work, Bowen bridged gaps between the chemist and the geologist. He was among the first to analyze the behavior of inclusions in the magma by physical chemical methods. He influenced thought in petrology by skilled experimentation, the supplemented interferences made from field investigations through numerous papers in professional journals. He contributed significantly to the mineralogical knowledge of rock forming minerals. Active in numerous professional societies, Bowen served as the president of the Geological Society of America and the Mineralogical Society of America. His accomplishments were recognized by medals from various professional societies including the Fenrose Medal of the Geological Society of America in 1941.